Well, uh, not a week. Just last night, in fact, yeah. the NCAA tournament uh, on the men's side uh, finished with UConn handling business against Purdue, and you had Donovan Klingon battling off against Zach Eady, 7-2 against 7-4. And uh, a lot of the uh, draft prognosticators released their new boards and uh, surprise, surprise, <gasps> there's risers from March Madness. Oh, no way. Uh, Kristen Peake at YahooSports.com now has Donovan Klingon going number five overall to the Portland Trailblazers. This is obviously pre-lottery. She's just slotting Donovan Klingon in at number five. Uh, I've seen others slot in Klingon at number five, number six, number seven. And I guess in this draft where things are incredibly flat, you can maybe make that argument. Because he's a sophomore and he's 7'2", and he's got a thing that can get him on the floor and that he's a plus rebounder and shot blocker. But I don't know, man. Like, as good as that run was, and as, as, as he might be a solid pro, which a solid pro in college is dominant. That's that's what happens. But I, I don't see how you can keep him on the floor. He's a zero offensively. Like, he's, he's not as, as mobile as he is for a guy that's 7'2". He has almost no vertical pop, so you really can't use him as like a hard roll, lob threat kind of guy. It looked at times as if he, and defending Zach Eady is damn near impossible. He's as big every, as hell everybody and over great the, touch. Everybody over the last couple of years has found. It is really difficult thing to do because he is big, he uses his body, but there were times where, and this is what I thought was impressive about Eady last night, is that... He has looked slow and methodical, and that just doesn't translate to the NBA. Yet, I thought that Klingon would do a better job of being that guy who can eliminate some of those moves just based on his size. And look, vertically, you saw Edie had some some troubles against Klingon uh, because of his length and his size, because the the playing field was relatively level at seven four against seven foot two. But what I was surprised with was Zach Eady was sealing and getting around Klingon more than I thought he would last night because that was supposed to be the strength of Klingon as opposed to Eady is that he would be quicker and he would have the ability to more or less keep Eady in front of him. And I just didn't really see it. And I thought that Eady probably did help his draft stock because there's so few opportunities to see him against a, another seven footer who is skilled or an NBA caliber player. And I thought Edie played a hell of a game last night. No, he did. And looking uh, through this, let's see, uh, Bleacher Report, Jonathan Wasserman has the magic taking Edie at 21 on CBS Sports. Let's see. They've got Edie going 22nd on Yahoo. We're looking at. There's so many ED references in every article now. It's unbelievable. Uh, 31st to the Raptors. So 20th to 30th. Post lottery. Okay. Okay. As it pertains to Klingon, it's anywhere from like five to nine. And again, eye of the beholder type stuff. I just I if you're in this draft, if if you're a if you're a young rebuilding team, I think you're taking the biggest swings you can find. And I don't see is no matter their size. I don't see neither Klingon or Edie as big swings. I see Sauer as a big swing. I see Topic. I see Cody Williams. I see Tijon Saloon, the, the French, you know, quasi big wing. Uh, Cody Williams. Like those are the guys I see as big swings. They're developmental guys. And if you're in this draft and you're like, well, things are flat, you know, from whatever pick to whatever pick, from four to 15. I don't understand how guys like this would be elevating when you're looking at the teams that are picking at the top. The Pistons, the Blazers, the Spurs. Mm -mm. The Wizards need everything, so whatever. But I hope they take Zach Eady or Donovan Klingon. I mean, look, the Wizards take uh, uh, Donovan Klingon. Great. More power More to power him. to you. Go look, get him, Go guys. get him, guys. I think they should. Great, hey, great idea. Start that. Kling Kong to Washington. Ooh. There we go. Let's From do Yukon it. From Yukon to Washington? Yeah, let's go. Kling Kong to Washington. Yeah. They, and I want, I, I think that would be great. That's a great fit there. I think that he would be amazing and it would obviously help the Portland Trailblazers. So, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. I, looking at mock drafts right now, uh, one of the things I'm working on is, uh, is um, charting mock draft changes over basically from the beginning of this year until now to see kind of where 
guys are slotted at and how it changes through the cycle. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how from now until the end, you know, the cycle, you know, we we actually get to draft time, how you're going to see this methodical changes. And I don't understand how Donovan Klingon went from 12 through 15 to fifth in the NCAA tournament. This is this is Zach Collins' redux. That's and what we're seeing. That is a not a game that people want should want to play. I the 30 plus 35 plus games should matter significantly more than the six. I thought team oriented wise, like I, I know that people were like, Bond of a clean is seven foot two, didn't even rebound. I, I thought he did a hell of a job last night though of trying to keep Zach Eady because that was the primary goal, trying to keep Zach Eady away and off the boards. And the fact Eady had 10 rebounds, right? And it was walling Zach Eady off and pulling him away from the bucket. The offensive rebounds last night were incredible for UConn. And I think that whether you look at it's Klingon or Johnson those guys, their goal was not to haul in the boards, but to just keep Zach Eady away from them. I think they did a really good job because when you have Cam Spencer being your leading rebounder in the national championship game, not not the best look for you know seven foot two Donovan Klingon, but it's what Danny Hurley asked them to do, right? And I think in that vein, maybe if you just have a guy, and and this is to your point though of. The, not a top five pick is the guy that you want to just do the junkyard dog work, right? Yeah. And just do what the coach has asked and do what the team needs. You need a guy who is a creator and a game changer in the top five. And maybe that just says more about where this draft is at because you said it yesterday that there are five guys that will be at the top of next year's draft that would probably be number one this year. And that, yeah. I think I think the rise of Klingon is probably more geared towards what we're seeing as this draft class is just not very good. Yeah, I mean, to, to kind of put into perspective where, where Klingon sits in all this, he's 89th in rebound rate in the country, which he's still really good. It's like a 23.5% rate yeah. on the defensive side. On the offensive side, he's, I want to say he's in the top 50? Yeah, 42nd, 13.8%, which together, very positive rebounding rate. But we're not talking about the best rebounder in college basketball. Nope. You're not talking about the best rim protector in the world. Like, the the degrees of difference between Klingon and I hate I hate doing this, but Klingon not, and not even Wemby, but Chet is so massive when you're talking about mobility and scheme fit. And even though the, the question about Chet is he's not big enough, it's like well Klingon's bigger, he can kind of support that. It's like sure, but do you want to use a top five pick on an auxiliary guy that doesn't have great? scheme fit that you, you have to kind of build around that doesn't have much offense? You nailed it with the Zach Collins reference because what's the thing about Klingon that everybody says? He can pull you out if he needs to. He can shoot a three. He can he can extend your offense out around the perimeter if you need to. He shot one three last night. It did not go in. But at the same token, like you sat there and you looked at it and you went, How he, he has that stroke. So what people are going to do somebody's going to find their Neil O'Shea who's going to squint at it and say, yeah, I think we can make turn him into a shooter in the NBA where we got a seven-foot shooter now. Yeah, and that's the thing is that. Klingon hasn't shown that. Like, you know, Collins- what about what about Stephon Castle and Tristan Newton, though? Well, Tristan Newton, who is like Mr. Big Time, just shows up in the biggest moments. This is back-to-back uh, player of the uh, Final Fours for him. And I, it was amazing to see him after his struggles on Saturday to kind of reboot in the way he played last night. Yeah, no, I uh, I look That's at exciting. Castle, and Castle, for me, I've got sixth on my board. And I think you can make an argument that he can get into the top five. But my my top five, as it sits right now, is Saar, Reza, Shea, Williams, Topich, Saloon. And the reasoning for all of those guys is, number one, the smallest guy in this group is Topich at, at 6'6". Six, six. And it's about taking swings. Like, who who has the most potential upside? Castle, I look at and go, he's kind of in the Wes Matthews mold, where yeah. it's like, can do everything but shoot. Gets after it. He's bigger than Wes was, as far as size. But if the shooting comes around, then he's a, a really high-level role player. Yeah. But I think if you're, if you're drafting top five, again, I think you have to shoot higher than that on these guys. But... Yeah, and again, that's if you're wondering why UConn was so good, I just literally mentioned two guys that are going probably top twelve. Pretty good. So pretty good. It's a it's a good spot to be. 
But that's what the NCAA tournament can do for you. It can it, make you a lot of money. It's a money maker. Fairly or unfairly. In a worst draft that we've had in a decade. Or it can, you know, upset some folks as far as their opinion on uh, Kentucky's guards in Dillingham and Shepard, who didn't show up in a game against Oakland because of a zone defense that Cal didn't have him, didn't have him ready for. Oh, boy. That's so, tough. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting place to end up. 